We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole Joe Button situation. So everybody and their mama been asking me to talk about this. If you guys don't know, Joe Button has been currently trending for the past 24 hours on Twitter. And folks are dragging him by his bald head, okay? They are dragging his ass up and down Twitter. And all of this stems behind the whole beef that went down with him and little Yachty. They're on this new complex show called Everyday Struggle. And Joe Button and DJ Academics are the host of the show. And basically, Joe Budden has been having issues with Lil Yachty for a while now, and everything hit the fan yesterday. So what I want to do is kind of break down everything to y'all, to folks who don't know how this kind of, you know, quote-unquote beef started. So what all initially happened to cause all this drama is that back on April 1st, Joe Budden, um, he basically released a statement on the show basically saying that Lil Yachty is not real hip-hop. And this is what Joe Budden said. He says, you know how I feel about Yachty. I never want to talk about Yachty. I don't think that Yachty is hip hop. I think Yachty is ruining the culture and he's someone who should not be accepted in the fucking culture. So when he said that, a lot of folks, you know, gave Joe Button the side eye like, damn, why are you throwing so much salt at him? Why are you constantly talking shit? But then little Yachty's daddy jumped in the fray. Y'all who don't know, little Yachty grew up in a household in the suburbs with both his parents, his mother and his father. Yes, I've done a lot of research on him. He's genuinely a really good kid, okay? He was raised well, regardless of what he raps about or you know what he talks about. He was raised in the decent household and his father was in his life. So his father took to social media to call out uh, Joe Budden two days later. In a since-deleted Instagram post, this is what his father said. He said, nigga, you have no relevance in hip-hop. And on my life, I bet when his album drops, his numbers will be better than any project you have ever released. He's done more in one year than you've done in your whole whack-ass career. Fuck out of here. Niggas love trying their best to pull somebody down instead of lifting somebody up. Get that free press, bruh, off the back of my youngin', but you still a cornball. Old whack-ass rapper issues. <laughs> so when he wrote that, y'all, I felt the hell out. I'm like, shit, Mr. Boat did not come to play, honey. You will not be coming for his damn child, okay? And that's what a father is supposed to do. A father is supposed to take up for their child. So I don't blame his father popping off because Joe Button is probably around his damn father's age. So anyways, well, if that's not it, they finally decided to invite Little Yachty to the show. And Little Yachty agreed, and he didn't have to. Little Yachty could have been like, you know what? I'm, I'm fucking rich and famous, and I'm on Target commercials and Sprite commercials. I don't have to come on y'all's Lex News TV show when I can do real shows like MTV, BET, things like that. But he still decided to come onto the show, and that's where the shit hit the fan. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys some snippets of what went down on the show. Check this out. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. just saw the video and you guys just saw the two clips one of joe budden just being so pissed off that little yachty says that he's happy and then the other one they're talking about the 360 deal which i did find kind of disturbing that little yachty did not know what a 360 deal is but i'm assuming being that his father is in his life i'm assuming they got him around managers and even if he doesn't know the whole extent because he's only 19 i'm sure his parents you know what I'm saying, know enough not to get him into the wrong type of deal. So after this video went viral um, of Joe Budden just basically going off on Little Yachty, when I tell you Twitter drug his ass, Instagram drug his ass, this shit had me cracking up. I want y'all to go ahead and check out the tweets, the comments, and what folks had to say about Joe Button. Check this out. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. <laughs>
It's not hip hop culture. It's not hip hop culture. Was Metallica shitting on Blink 182? That's a very bad idea. That's a very bad idea. All right, so you guys just saw the comments, the tweets, and what folks had to say. Now, I will say this. Unfortunately, some people feel like once they get up in age and they're over the age of 30, that all of a sudden they have, like, all this elder knowledge. And because I'm in my 30s, you, Mr. Teenager, need to listen to me because I've been in the game for years and I've been through a lot of shit. And they, you know, they get on this preachy, preachy mode. And, you know, and I never try and do that, you know. I tell young people my experiences and what I've been through, and you can take it or leave it. I don't shove anything down anybody's throat. You know, I, I understand where Joe's coming from a bit as an older person in the industry and Kids today haven't been through a lot and haven't been, you know, basically fucked in the industry with no Vaseline. Yes, Joe, we understand that you're bitter and you're still upset because your career did not pop off. And the only song and the only hit that you've had is Pump It Up. And the only thing that you've had to maintain your relevancy is doing videos on the internet with your different, you know, uh, model girlfriends and then going on Love and Hip Hop New York. And now you're doing this, you know, podcast. So his career has not gone the way he would have planned it. You know, when when Joe Button came into the game, he was hoping to be the next, you know, Nas or Jay-Z, like most guys hope to be, but that wasn't the case for him. And he, you know, he could rap, but he just, I don't know, he just never really blew up the way that he thought he would. Um, so like I said, my problem is that sometimes when people get up in age, they tend to put themselves on this pedestal that no one put them on. And then they tend to talk down to younger people. And that was my issue with this interview is that not only did he come off like an asshole to little Yachty, but he was scolding him. He was over talking him. He was being condescending. DJ Academics was being loud. He was being just as messy. You know, it's just very, very unprofessional. And this is why some people do not take black platforms seriously because because, you know, it's one thing if you want to ask questions. It's another thing if you're jumping down my throat. It's not that serious. Little Yachty did nothing to either one of these guys besides make music. And that's just not how you come off to anybody, let alone a teenager. When you start yelling at young people like that and being condescending towards them, they'll just tend to shut down. They don't want to be bothered with the nonsense. And I don't blame them. Now I'll say this. I don't care for Lil Yachty's music. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a bit too old. I, I listen to some of his stuff. My kids listen to him. Um, you know, I, one of somebody's concert is coming up and they're asking about going to the concert. So, I mean, this his music is for young people, okay? My kids put me up on Lil Yachty and that's how I know about his music. And, you know, that one song, it gets cold like Minnesota. I liked it, that song, just because he shot out at Minnesota. And when he came out here, um, I believe it was a year ago, like his concert sold out. It was a lot of kids that went to his concert. But me personally, I'm too old to just, you know, that that's not going to be his music and Migos music or, or not music that I go to when I go to listen to music. Now, if it just happens to come on the radio, I'll listen to it. But I'm not going to be like, let me go through my playlist and play that little Yachty. Because I'm not, you know, 16, 17. It, it, you know, his music doesn't interest me like that. But with that being said, he did not deserve the disrespect that he got on that show. Um, he did not deserve the unprofessionalism that he got on that show. You have a lot of so-called, you know, rappers out here. Um, and I call them mumble rappers. Let's keep it real. It's very hard to understand what they say. You know, th there's no modern day Tupacs, okay? There's no modern day Jay-Zs. Um, and I think a lot of people my age need to realize, and I know I get stuck in nostalgia at times too, and I'll say things like, damn, I miss 90s hip hop. And it's fine to reminisce and it's fine to think about the days of Tupac and Biggie. But I think a lot of people my age need to realize that it's not the 90s, okay? It's cool to miss old school hip hop. It's cool to miss the way things used to be, but we also need to get in to 2017 and realize that this is a new era and it's young people who are leading this this new era of music and fashion and everything else. And I just don't believe in knocking young people because at the end of the day, we were all young. We were all trying to figure out this thing called life. And you know, who wants people knocking you all the time. Little Yachty just happened to run across a big opportunity. This young man really grinded from the bottom. He didn't just wake up and become a rapper. You know, he went to school for a bit, ended up dropping out, moved to New York, you know, was really grinding and getting his music out there, dyed his hair red to make himself stand out, happened to run into somebody who knew Kanye, you know, ended up being in a Kanye West um, fashion show. Basically was on from there. He was building his own social media cult following 
And all of these kids were just gravitating towards him. And just because you're in your 30s and you had no idea who Lil Yachty was, that means nothing because you're not the ones who run the music industry. You guys are not the ones who influence, you guys are not the ones who influence or push things on social media. It's the younger generation. That's what I keep telling people. That's why Nicki Minaj is selling and Remy Ma is not. It's about the younger generation. That is who you have to tap into. And because Lil Yachty is of that generation, that's why they support him. It was him having a huge cult following on SoundCloud that got him his national deal. Is he signed to a 360 deal? I don't know because I was not there. But that's what pushed him to where he's at now. I am very surprised when I see him on Target ads, when I see him in Sprite commercials, because he, the way he looks, his hair, that's not something that you would normally see on, you know, just national television. So I can see how people can get at the side eye, like, who are you in bed with? Who are you cool with to get these really huge brand deals? Because I've never seen J. Cole on a Target commercial. I've never seen, you know, I think Kendrick may have done like some Sprite commercials. I don't know. But for the most part, most rappers, you don't see them on mainstream commercials like you see Little Yachty, you know. But at the end of the day, he has the right to be happy. Like he said, his life has changed a whole 360. No pun intended, but he went from being a struggling college student. Like he said, he was doing credit card scams. He was doing anything just to keep his head above water. He had no money. Fuck, no females was fucking with his ass. And now he's one of the biggest, you know, people in the world. And I said this even during the whole Grammy Awards. Like, who the hell is his PR person? Who is his manager? This dude went from being a SoundCloud rapper to being nominated for a Grammy. That says a lot. You no, know, you can say it's the industry. You can say it's the Illuminati. You can say that he sold his soul. I don't know. But all I know is that his career has blown up in less than two years. He's come a long way in less than two years. And I think, you know, Joe Budden was making some important parts. Like, you know, I don't want you to be screwed over. I don't want you signing 360 deals. I want you to respect your brand. But again, it's about how you talk to somebody. And when you talk to them rude and condescending, it does not come off as being sincere. And that's why Little Yachty wasn't trying to hear it. And I think that's the problem between the older generation and the younger generation is like, you have a lot of older people who are still in competition with these young kids and you can't be in competition with children. You have to realize when your time has gone and when your ship has sailed, you have to accept that and then be there to support that person. Be a role model, be a father figure, you know what I'm saying, to support that person. Don't sit there and knock everything that they're doing. You know, so the whole situation is crazy and I thank Joe Budden, you know, while I understand where he was coming from, um, you know, right message, right messenger, and definitely the wrong way to deliver that message. You know, again, Joe Button, I'm trying to figure out where all this conscious music is since he wants to preach to people. Most of his music consisted of, you know, partying and fucking bitches. You know, it's not like he was dropping all types of conscious music and really trying to school the youth. And then on top of that, he allowed himself to basically be used and manipulated on national television. And we saw him as a drug addict, you know, as a, a woman abuser and everything else. So his track record is not that squeaky clean for him to be trying to throw stones at little Yachty. Point blank period. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation once again concerning joe budden going off on little yachty for being damn happy all right deuces hey you guys it's your girl t make sure to subscribe like and share my videos you can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise also don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos talk to y'all later deuces